Turn at the 8.30 high beam this morning, and we're so privileged and uh, happy to be joined this morning by two-time National Book Award finalist Deborah Wiles, author who will be with us on Monday at Kent State Tuscarawas for One Book, One Community. Deb, good morning, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, Good morning, Brad. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Certainly our pleasure. So we've got this uh, event coming up, One Book, One Community at Kent State Tuscarawas. Uh, They're hosting it on Monday. And uh, you are the featured author with your book about Kent State and about the May 4th, 1970 uh, shootings on the campus there. Um, what led you, someone from the South at the time at least, to, uh, to dive into this and write about Kent State? Well, I, I wasn't at Kent State, but I was 16 years old and I had friends in Vietnam uh, and my dad was flying back and forth to Vietnam at the time, uh, C-141 Starlifters. I lived in Charleston um, because that's where my dad was stationed at the mm-hmm. time. And I just remember so clearly that day um, and how devastating it was and scary it was and how I identified with the students who were there. I would soon be a college student myself. And the Vietnam War was such a pivotal um difficult moment in our history and um, so many were protesting against the war, so many young people at that time, Nixon was president, and um, the war had escalated and we knew it, you know, as young as we were, we knew what was happening because we paid attention. And when four students were killed and nine more were injured um, at Kent State on May 4th, 1970, it was all we could talk about. And yet, as I grew up, um, you know, it became more and more in the distant past and yet stayed with me. And when I became a writer, I wrote a lot about the 60s. I wrote a lot about the South because my parents were from Mississippi and we had spent so much time down there during the Civil Rights Movement. And one thing led to another after these three novels of the 1960s that I wrote, Kent State kept popping up and popping up. Mm -hmm. And I just kept saying, you know what? I'm not going to write about that. That was really awful. That was so bad. And yet the 60s had so much turbulence in it. Right. And I had been writing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally said to my editor, this is going to have to be the next book. And he said, go for it. Yeah, that's and great. I've always been such a an advocate for free speech and for ways to protest that are peaceful which is really, I mean, these kids were angry. They were out there screaming at the National Guard who was standing there with their guns pointing at them. And when things all went crazy, um, that was the end of that peaceful protest. Now, as you mentioned, you weren't there, but you have this story being told from lots of different viewpoints. Is that right? Yes. Um, And that was the challenge in writing about Kent State, was trying to figure out how do I bring these voices to life and how do I dare even attempt to because I wasn't there. And yet I wanted to know, you know, so much of what I write is about I want to know what's happening. I want to know what happened. You know, what what is it that happened? Um, So I went to Kent State and I went several times and I interviewed folks and I spent a lot of time in the archive, the May 4th archive um, that they have there, which is a treasure trove of documents and letters and photographs and newspaper clippings and other people's writing about the time and survivors' writings and um, spent time um, with the folks at the visitor center there, which is amazing and still worth going to. Mm And I also did the observance, the May 4th observance, where you go and um, do the walking tour at night. It begins at 11 and um, candlelit. You walk through the campus, around the campus, and you end up where the four students were slain. And there's a candlelight vigil that goes on all night long. And uh, every 30 minutes, someone new stands in each of the spots where the four students fell. And it's so moving. And the next day, there's a um, commemoration and speakers. And y'all probably know all about that, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I got a whole new look into what had happened at Kent State. And because there were so many different opinions about what happened, 
I gave each of those opinions a voice. So that's what you're talking about is those different voices. It's a conversation that they're having one with another. Um, and in trying to write this book, it took me about a year to find the voice. And finally, I read Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. And that opened up a lot for me. It's just voices talking to one another about that time and place. And I thought, you know what? Let me let them speak. Yeah. So yeah. that's what it is. That's, uh, that's tremendous. Does it strike you as uh, ironic or maybe coming almost full circle that uh, you're, you're featured at this event at a Kent State branch? Yes. And it's, it, I'm humbled. I'm really honored to be able to do this with this one book, one community that the library system does, and I'm just um, thrilled to be able to come there and to share the book and also to learn, to learn more. You know, you always learn as much as you teach or speak or share, um, and I'm in it for that too. Survivors will be there. Um, there's a panel with survivors on Monday when the uh, One Book, One Community festivities kick off um, all day long. I'll talk with high schoolers in the morning, the community will come in the evening. It's um, it promises to be a an event I won't soon forget, and that um, I hope fills people with the idea that they have change to make in their lives as well. And the book actually ends on a you know it ends on a hopeful note of insert your name here. Oh, good. You know, what is it that you will do going forward? I'm looking so forward to that. Uh, if you can, I'm a little bit briefly, I guess, tell us about uh, building toward this book. You had the kind of a 60s trilogy, I guess, Countdown and uh, Revolution, what the third one was called, Anthem. What, uh, you know, were those kind of a uh, story in the building? They are. And, and I didn't know that they were at the time, just like so many things in our lives where we look back and we say, oh, that's where I was going. Mm -hmm. um, but I decided I had written some books about growing up in Mississippi and they had had civil rights themes eventually and I didn't know where I wanted to go next. And then I thought, but what really did happen in Freedom Summer? What really did happen in 1968, 1969? So I proposed three novels of the 1960s for young readers which turned out to be Countdown, Revolution, and Anthem, 62, 64, and 69. And I called them documentary novels, and they're full of scrapbook materials along with a novel of the time, but they have photographs, song lyrics, um, propaganda, all kinds of newspaper clippings and sayings and quotes. And it's just, it's a, they're, they're for all ages. Um, we targeted kids in like upper elementary to middle school into high school. Each book got older. And as I got to 1969, I kept running into Kent State. And I ended up at the end of the last scrapbook in Anthem, including Kent State. And that's how I bounced into Kent State. But it's a very different book. Kent State is not full of scrapbooks. It's not full of um you know, visual materials, but it is full of protest songs from the time, and it is full of those voices so that you hear the National Guard speaking. You hear the townspeople in Kent speaking. You hear the administration officials. You hear the students pro and con. I wanted you to hear those voices and not tell you how to think, but to showcase the fact that this event happened that had so many different voices that came together with different opinions and still do have those different mm -hmm. opinions. How do we work with that? Mm -hmm. How do we allow everyone's voice to be heard and yet come to a conclusion? That is, that's so fair because it's such, it was such a complicated web that, that was being uh, woven at that time yeah. and, and we'll never be able to unravel it all. So tell us how, uh, as a interesting, uh, interested person, I can go, uh, can I purchase a book? Will you sign it? Uh, when, it, when uh, is the talk <laughs> and all that? <laughs> You can find out more about me at my website, deborahwiles.com, and you can come to the Kent State campus, Tuscarawas campus, on Monday, and you can get a book, and you can listen, and you can talk, and you can share. Um, there's a whole lot going on. I know that there's a website dedicated to it at the library's website, the mm -hmm. um, Literary Foundation, and it's really, it's an opportunity for us all to come together and remember what happened in the past 
and to see its, per, its parallels today in the future and to make some decisions about our own lives. Every single person's decision counts and every single person is worthy of dignity and respect. Well, we uh, certainly are looking forward to it. Again, that's, uh, your website is Deborah Wiles, in case somebody's wondering, dot com. So that's where they can find that, right? That's right. That's right. right. You can find more about Kent State there, more about the 60s trilogy, and there'll be a link there, too, on my calendar to the website that tells you more in detail about what's happening Monday. Well, Deb, I hope you have a great flight. I hope they treat you like you uh, deserve to be treated. A very classy <laughs> guest. We uh, certainly appreciate your time this morning, and I can't wait to have you here when it's still 70 degrees in Ohio in November. I can't believe it. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so Good. much. Good. Hey, it's been great to talk to you. Appreciate that. Uh, I do, too. Thanks Deb, so much. Bye Deb now. Wiles, thank you. Deb, our guest this morning. She is the author of Kent State and many other books, and she will be the um, featured author of One Book, One Community Monday on the campus of Kent State Tuscarawas. Our guest this morning on the 830 High Beam here on the BT Morning Show.